and make you become who he wants you to be. It says if the Lord wants somebody, I say if he needs somebody, Lord, send me. I yield myself to you. Not part of me, all of me. I ain't got no time for myself. Whatever you want me to do, God, that's what I want to do. If he wants somebody, God, I volunteer. See, when you volunteer, your mind made up. A lot of y'all ain't going to volunteer because your mind ain't made up. A lot of y'all don't want God to use you because you want to be used your own self. What God wants you to do, you can't do what you want to do. It is no more about you when you say, Lord, if you want somebody, send me. That's why I say if you need somebody, he needs somebody. Because the harvest is plentiful, but the labels are few. We talking about real label. We ain't talking about people just clap. We ain't talking about people just do it on Sunday or do it on Wednesday or do it on Friday. We talking about somebody that's mind is made up. That even at home, it's the same standard. Even at the job, it's the same standard. It don't matter if I go anywhere where the devil at. It's the same standard. Because why? I give it all to you. I, I like that because it started real good because it made me think about the vision of Psalm 94 and 16. Who will rise up against the evil doer? Y'all ain't gonna, y'all see, see, now you got to eat that. The song said, if you want somebody, I said, if you need somebody, now he said, who will rise up against the evil doer? That's yourself. That's your mama, that's your daddy, that's your sister, brother. So now you can't say, Lord, you me. Because I won't come up against my mama, my dad, and my sister, my brother, my best friend, my co-worker. So it just was a song. And that's where we at. We just sang a lie. And all liars going to have their part. Because if you sang that song from your heart, then have you surrender. The psalm said, who will I, who will rise up for me against the evildoer? Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Who? He asked the question, who? Y'all just sung you will. God asked him, who? God is telling us so much in this ministry. And so many people are getting neglect with getting the truth. And we getting the truth and won't go. We won't go. Listen to what it said in Isaiah 48 and 22. There is no peace, said the Lord, unto the wicked. He said, there's no peace for y'all that ain't going, that ain't surrender. There ain't no peace for you. He's telling you that. And y'all still believe y'all got peace because y'all have a good day every now and then. Or, or you do what you want to do. He said, there's no peace, said the Lord, unto the wicked. Pure evil. Morality wrong. He said, pure evil. He's telling us that. But we don't believe it. Truth. I receive it or I reject it. Truth. I follow it or is I'm just a fan. Do I follow truth or I'm just a fan? God looking for some real people. He come back in Romans 14 and 23. He said, and he that doubted is damned. If he eat, because he eat it not of faith. For whosoever is not of faith is sin. If you doubt, you damn. We don't nobody want to hear that, but y'all started saying y'all ago, you damn if you ain't got faith. Where that put you at? What that make you feel when God said you are damned? And he that doubt is damned. Now, now tell me, what's your doubt? Because I just preached last week about your church. What's really going on with the church today? 
they don't believe. So whenever you doubt, that means you don't believe. Y'all believe the word of God? Then a lot of y'all damn. Because you doubt what God say, and you doubt what God said through his men when he said, how can they hear without a preacher? And how can he preach unless he was sin? But y'all doubt, or y'all got the doubt that we were sin. So you're damned. Because every person here, he told you to be born again, that you can have the spirit to be able to discern what is right and what is wrong. Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Truth. Either you receive it and follow it, or you reject it and just be a fan. All I do is cheer for God. I don't know God. I, I, me and Mac laughed last night, and, and it kind of made me think about it. We went to Chick-fil-A, and there were three young guys, and how when the guy seen my tag, said, give Jesus a chance, 16-year-old guy, and uh, he walked in the truck and said, y'all just came to church? And I said, yeah. He said, I like your tag. I said, man, you don't know Jesus. He said, I don't know him. I don't know of him. I know him. And I said, I said, you know him for real? He said, I know him for real. And I said, man, you'll make me wrong. I ran all over the curb because it was just exciting to hear a young man talk like that. Then I pulled to the next young man, which was a young black dude, and uh, he's 16 years old. And he said, y'all just come to church? I'm like, yeah. He said, I said, you don't know nothing about God. He said, man, I'm cold I said, what? I said, man, shut your mouth. He said, oh, yeah. Uh, I, I'm in the God. So me and Matt were just laughing. I was just excited because here's some young people that believe. So I pull him around the corner and the dude brought my food. So I just got the test. Can I get three in a row? I said, man, are you saved? He said, what? I said, you go to church? He said, yeah, man. All of us in here mostly go to church. I said, shut your mouth, young people. And most of y'all don't people don't even know you saved. They was excited about being saved. After that how I left there, I was excited. I'm excited too about this word tonight. And, and my wife don't know what I'm preaching. But that's one of my favorite songs. If the Lord wants somebody, send me. My mama might not go. My brother might not go. My sister might not go. But God, if you need somebody, Lord, send me. I'll go. And I've been going ever since. I didn't, didn't really want to, I didn't want to feel like I wanted the priest this week. I, I just had so much on my mind. But how can you give up so soon in the race? When God been using you so much. Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter, in the third and the fourth verse. And I come to preach hell up at you, scare hell up at you. I come to tell you where you at and where God is not pleased where you at. And God started sending word through him. But you know what I'm saying? I'm not seeing people taking the word and changing their life. I'm seeing people hearing God's word and staying the same. And God said, that's not enough. That's not enough. And I, I, I you know, I got, I got some little, little comical stuff, but, you know, I just, I was asking God in the back, God, why you made me put these glasses back on? And, and I, and you know, I, I wore my glasses last night because, you know, the letter was small in the Bible. And I'm like, why do you tell me to put these glasses back on? And Tony sent me a, 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 a a video of me and my wife singing when I was sick. And I was real small. And I seen these same glasses that I had put on. So I just talked to Tony about it and I asked, God, why do, why do you want me to put these glasses on? He said, just like you living in your flesh and don't have the Holy Ghost. You can see, but you can't see what I want you to see. So... I went back to when I put the glass on, 
I can read the Bible clearly, but when I put the glass on, it just illuminated out the paper. So God said, with the glasses, it's giving you the same power how the Holy Ghost give you. You just see better. So that means when you see better, you ain't got to fumble a lot of time over stuff. So my success been obeying God. So I got my glasses on. So 2 Corinthians, let's see what these glasses are going to do. Because 2 Corinthians 4 and, and, and 3 said, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world has blinded the mind of them that believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is in the image of God, should shine unto them. Oh, Heavenly Father and Jesus, God, do what you do with me. I told you if you need somebody. Lord, I told you years ago, send me. God, I still feel like that in 2021. Lord, if you need somebody, want somebody, Lord, send me. I won't renege, I won't rebel, I won't go against your word, I won't take down for your word, I won't take down for your people, I won't take down for Pensacola, nobody else, God, because you died for me. You healed me when I was sick. God used me in a way you ain't never used me before. Who will rise up for me against the evildoer? Who will stand for me against the workers of iniquity? Lord, send me. I'll go. God, have your way in this service. Do what you do. Give your people a word that when you get ready to judge them, they don't have no denial. They don't have no excuse. They don't have nothing, God, because you have spoke to them. And God, we ever give you the praise. We give you the thank. In your son Jesus' name we pray. And every heart can say amen, amen, and amen. And you can have your seat. God is so good. Because he's God all by himself. God started telling us stuff, and we don't hear him. I preached last uh, Sunday, what's really going on with the church today? Question. And I answer, they just don't believe. My message today, I'm not even going to keep y'all holding on or waiting, it's the sin of unbelief. God told me to tell y'all, that y'all just don't believe. But it's a sin not to believe. It's a sin. And we sit in here and hear God press the word. And God men go before him. And women go before him. And prepare a word for y'all. And y'all come in here. He that doubted is damned if he eat. And I told you. You eat God's word unworthy. It's the sin of unbelief. And we got so many people that sin it that don't believe. This is what he said. He's telling you in John 12 and 32. He said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. And we should be lifting God up. But we got too much doubt. We got too much about us that we like and love that we can't do what God wants you to do. Jeremiah 7 and 23 and 24 said, but this thing command I them saying obey my voice God saying obey my voice but y'all got unbelief you doubt God and that's what he's talking about unbelief he said a lack of religion belief and a and a, a, a answer of faith he said you, you your belief you don't believe so you answer of faith because your faith can't grow because you don't believe and that's what he's telling us. He's telling us that the, 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 the obey my voice. He said, and I will be your God and you shall be my people. If y'all just obey his voice, but you doubt him too much. You doubt that you, your thing that you're doing is better. Everybody here that's still in sin, you telling God one thing. The stuff that I'm doing is better. You don't believe that he got something better. You don't believe that he died for you. And he said, there is no peace said the Lord unto the wicked. And that's in the, that's in the Bible two times. That's Isaiah 48 and 22, 57 and 27, 21. He's telling you that two times. There is no peace for the person that don't believe. 
There's no peace. He said, he said, I will be their God. He said, I'll be y'all God. But you know what? Y'all just like the people in Israel. They had God for a king and want a natural man because everybody had a natural man. Just like y'all is. Y'all on reverse. Y'all ain't looking for a king, but y'all looking for a natural man or a woman. Or y'all looking for success in a car because a car in the house is going to make you better. But God was a king. They want a natural man. They want to be able to feel him. They want to be able to touch him. And that's the way we will. If God allow y'all to touch him and see him, y'all might believe. Yeah, but he told Thomas, Thomas, you only believe because you're getting a chance to see me. But this is what them like Apostle Simon that ain't never seen me, but yet believe. It's a reward for them. I, I, I love God because he's trying to tell us these things. And that way he's saying, who will rise up from me? He said, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Boy, don't you know that's something to really know that you God people? I, I hear everybody talking about who God people are, but he said right here, you can be my people and walk in all the way that I command you, that it may be well unto you. He said, if you believe me, walk in all my ways. That's why he said, if you love me. But it's a sin of unbelief. Any doubt you got, anything that you doubt, you hear in God's word, and then you sit around and still do what you heard that God said don't do. No, he said you're going to be damned. I ain't said that. It's in the... It's in the Romans 14, 23. He said, as you eat my word and doubt, Lord him mercy. I said, God, boy, you, 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 you throw a strong, hard pitch. And that's why man don't like it. And, and, and what makes it so bad, God the pitcher, I'm the umpire. Everything he can throw upside the wall, strike. You said that was out of bounds, strike. You slide on base, out. Because you're going against God's word. Listen to what he said in Isaiah uh, uh, 7, I mean, say Jeremiah 7 and, and 24. He said, but they, but they hearken not. And that's where we at in him. It's a sin of unbelief. Everything God said, y'all get up and repent for, but you really don't believe. He said, a lack of religion, belief, and absence of faith. Belief and accepted that a statement is true or that something exists. Trust, faith, or confidence in something, someone, or something. But listen how the centurion soldier did. He said, Mark 9, 23 and 24, he said, Jesus said unto him, If thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believe. He said, can you believe that everything that you want is possible if you just believe? That means if you can believe in me and your faith grow, and then you become having confidence in me, you can trust and wait for me to do it and stop trying to do stuff that I ain't told you to do, trying to make it look like I did it. This is what he said. He said, he said, look, he said, he said, Jesus said unto him, if thou can't believe, all things are possible to him that believe. He said, all things are possible. Then he said, and straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, but help me. Help my unbelief. He said, help them things I don't believe. And you know a lot of y'all sitting here right now don't believe everything God said. But it's a sin. This man wasn't a part of God, but he believed that God could heal his, his servant. But here y'all say y'all believe him, but don't believe. This is what he said. He's telling us this because God's trying to get us to see how powerful that he is. He come back in Mark 16, 17, and 18. He said, and these signs shall follow them that believe. He said, there are signs that follow people that believe. There are signs that follow people that don't believe. There are signs. In other words, you're a coach killer. 
Whatever sign you're giving, you're killing somebody. Because you're saying you're a believer. But then if I follow you, I look at you, I'll die. This is what he said. He said, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongue. They shall take up serpent. And if they drink in the deadly thing, it shall not harm them. That's power, y'all. That's power. And God said, I give that power to who believe in me. But it's a sin of unbelief. So now you got to wonder why you don't have power over your situation. Where you're down at, where you're down at, where you're down now. It's a, it's a sin of unbelief. There's no peace, said the Lord, unto the wicked. Pure evil. So in the wicked you got, you pure evil. Everything you do is against God. This is what he said. He said, he said, he said, it shall not harm them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Ain't nobody got that kind of power, do it? Ain't nobody got that. And that's where he started, and Paul started telling the Corinthian church in, in, in 2 Corinthians 4. He said, Satan them blind, but God give light. Satan blind, God open your eye. But that's only if you believe everything. So that means a lot of our eyes still shut up and closed because we still don't believe all things. It's a sin. Y'all got to be scared to say of unbelief. What's really going on with your church today? What's really going on with y'all church? Why y'all don't believe what God said? Because he said they just don't believe. Now he told you that Sunday. But ain't none of y'all hardly went back and put that message in your spirit. You've been living, but you, you ain't deal with your church. You ain't deal with your unbelief. Then God come back. Um, I got a witness. A Jabba came in. I had a, a rough morning. And he came in just to talk to me a little bit. And I said, Jab, I said, you know when God be dealing with me by message, I most of you start from the W, or I start from the A's and go all the way back to the W. I started from the W, start all the way back, and let God just play on my mind, and he speak to me what he want me to preach. But when Joppa came, he told me to go to the eyes. I went to the eyes, and I told Joppa, I said, man, God don't gave me two messes. It's just like me trying to look out my natural eye and I see flesh. And I put on these glasses and I see clearly now that the rain is gone. A lot of y'all ain't seeing clear, clear because you're still in darkness. I'll prove it to you in this, in this passage right here. He said, therefore sin, that's the first verse. He said, therefore sin, we have this ministry as we have received mercy. See, God don't gave us mercy all these years that we've been in the church for all our blindness. But it's the sin of unbelief because you really don't believe God. Ain't that bad? So if you got unbelief, that means you got to be damned because your faith can't grow. And every message y'all coming to here give, y'all hear, but y'all leave here in unbelief. And it ain't the enemy stealing nothing. You just got your mind on what you like. So when you hear stuff come up again, what you like, you already shut down on it. In other words, you damn that word. So you know if you damn that word, you damning God. Because he was the word. But y'all in a bad position in him. This is what he said. He said, he said, we faint not. He said, you shouldn't faint. In bad situation, when the world coming up against y'all, people coming against you, you shouldn't, you shouldn't faint not. And that's what he ministered to me. I had another coach to tell me, Terry, how can you stop now? How you been going so good? It's the enemy. But then when he showed me the message, he said, faint not. So then he come back and said, he said, but having renounced the hidden thing of dishonest. 
Now, 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 now listen to believe. How many of y'all are hidden the dishonest thing in your life? How many of y'all hiding them things, them, them dishonest things in your life? God, God talking to us right here. I said, Paul, you, I said, you a mess right here. He said, but has renounced, he mean, has got rid of them, them, them hidden things that, that y'all got, that y'all probably be going to get rid of if you believe. But I'm telling you, God says something wrong with y'all churches. It's the sin of unbelief. That means you ain't even got to do nothing. You just don't believe what God said. Now, I know some of y'all got to repent already because there's a lot of stuff in the Bible y'all doubt. It don't matter if you've been fooled by somebody, you doubt. Prove it to me, Pastor, they doubt. For all have sinned. We have we don't doubt that. But it said we all have sinned. That means past him. But we thought it mean keep sinning. So we put, we put emphasis on that scripture because you, we misunderstood it. And know why you misunderstood it? You don't believe. This is what he said. He said, and come short of the glory of God. But then he come down there in Romans 6 and 23 to back what he was saying because the wages of sin is death. So if you still sinning and think it all right, you couldn't believe. So that means you got to have unbelief. But I don't believe all the Bible. That's why I tell everybody, uh, I don't deal with them people that don't, don't believe all the Bible. He said unbelief, a lack of religious belief, absent of faith. And I told you, you got to have belief before you get faith. And most of y'all confidence ain't got because y'all got unbelief. It's a sin. And a lot of y'all sitting right here thinking that y'all can go against the word of God. I can do this how I want to do it. I can do it how you want to do it. God ain't stamped your name in the Bible nowhere. I ain't seen now book name after none of y'all. None of y'all. I ain't seen now scripture had no quotation mark that this go to this person. I ain't seen none of that that said, Terry, you is exalted. He put me right with everybody else. So Jesus left an example for us to go by. And, and, and y'all know what's good, y'all know what's so awesome about God? This has some people walk all waving. He said, the step of a good man is ordered by the Lord. Now, a revelation that I got from there, that means every time I step, God plan. Y'all talk to me. So if the steps of a good man is ordered, every step you take ought to be from the Lord. Y'all talk to me. Y'all talk to me. Is every step y'all taking is ordered by the Lord. Every decision y'all make, if it's ordered by the Lord. So that means it's a lot of unbelief because the steps of a good man it's ordered by the Lord. And I, I said, God, order all my steps. Now, y'all y'all tell me, the step y'all walk today, every step, it said, the steps of a good man. He ain't said the walk of a good man. He said the steps of a good man. So that means every step, every step, this 11 and a half hit, the other step got to be ordered too. I can't walk one step good and the other step bad. Like, my right foot gonna be for God and my left foot gonna be for the devil. That's how y'all walking. Some steps are ordered by the Lord. Not all your steps. He's, he's telling us this. He said, uh, unbelief, a lack of religious belief and absence of faith. I can't say that enough. Absolute faith. This is what he said. He said, but have renounced the hidden thing of dishonor, not walking in craftiness. You know, where you deceiving people in your craftiness. You still got stuff you had from the world, and you still use it in the church, but you use it a different way. It's the same craftiness. You tell people, I'm going to do this, but then you know how they is, so you change what you say. That craftiness. 
If I stamp my approval that I'm going to do this, my word is all I got. That's why my steps are ordered by the Lord. But it's the sin of unbelief makes you still be like you are. And no God wants you to change. He said, present your body, and you ain't present none of it to him. All you do is come to church, and he ain't ordering your step to walk him. He ain't, he, ain't, he, ain't, he ain't ordering your step to come to church. You just something that you do. That's what he said. He's talking to him, he said, but have renounced the hidden thing. And that's why more people want to go to the church where they're preaching some fool in there and they ain't talking about the things about them. So you leave the church all right, but then you still don't have no belief in God. Listen to what he said. He said, but have renounced the hidden thing of dishonor, not walking in craftiness, not handling the word of God deceitfully, like you're telling people, well, this is what the word say, because you know the ignorance to the word. So you sit down and study some scripture and say, Lord, this is what God said, and God ain't told you nothing. And you sit and believe it, and you know God ain't telling them nothing, because then you hear what God said in the word of God, and you know they ain't lying up do doing it. So now, ask them, let me ask you this question. How do you believe that when you hear the word contradict what the person telling you? How do you deal with it? How do you deal with it? Somebody can tell you, and then he tell us in his word to show you unbelief. He says, study to show thyself approved. So even if you want to study, he said, how can you hear without a preacher? Now he ain't said, how can you hear without a man? He said, how can you hear without a preacher? So who teaching you? Who telling you what God said when he tell you how I want you to hear? It's the sin of unbelief. And you know what's bad about the sin of unbelief? Everything that your natural man tell you, you believe it. So that means you your own God. This is what he said. He's talking to him. This is what he said. He said, not handling the word of God deceitfully. He said, but by manifestation of the truth, commanding ourselves, every man, conscious in the sight of God. He said, every man, conscious in the sight of God. That means he checking every man. So now, that tells me that if the steps of a good man is all about the Lord, where your conscience is taking you? It's a sin of unbelief. And you know what I'm glad I got my glass on? I can see y'all eyes better. Now I can see how y'all y'all playing. I can see how y'all y'all thinking. I can see how y'all looking like you're all, all, all looking kind of like wishy-washy. You, you know, like, like when they say wishy-washy, they say your mind just Wish it was. This is what he said. He's telling us, oh, boy, y'all y'all right in the right place. This is what, this is what Isaiah 59 and, and 12 said. He said, for our transgressions are multiplied before thee. Our sin testify against us. Y'all hear that? Now, the sin of unbelief don't tell you that. The sin of unbelief tell you you can ask for forgiveness. The sin of unbelief tell you, you can repent. It's keeping you somewhere so you can't believe what God said. This is what it said right here again in Isaiah 59 and 12. For our transgression are multiplied before thee. He said, our transgression that we do since we don't believe what God said is started multiplying before because we once knew it was sin. Now God done told you what sin is and now you got unbelief that you can still do it. You don't believe that God said that it was your sin that got his hand caught up. He said, he said, multiply for Lord. He said, and our sin testify against us. What? But y'all don't believe that. Let me let me tell y'all something. You know, Friday, Friday, Wednesday, I talked about how people in, in the church uh Growing up, had handle children, and I, I know that after church, you know, me and my wife were talking, and I found out some things that went on in the church that I ain't know nothing about. 
But I know when God had me to talk about that, some of y'all thought I knew. And that's what I told Jabba. That's how people get mad with me because I started talking about stuff and then it be revealing something that y'all be on done and y'all think somebody be on told me, but I ain't even know. But you hear my wife say, your sin, what you did, testified against you. And, and, and y'all think somebody be on told. He said, for our transgression is with us. He said, the thing that we do are with you, and then you don't know that you walk around with a bag of sin on you. And that's why he said, loose every weight and sin. He, you walk around with all that sin around them. That's why y'all, some of y'all waited down. Some of y'all, all y'all want to do is sit down because you say you tired. You tired from carrying sin. You tired from tra carrying transgression. You tired from going against God's word in your sinful state. And you've been carrying it ever since you've been in the church because you didn't believe what God told you to get rid of. It's the sin of unbelief. And you know what's bad about the sin of unbelief? You had to figure out from the word what you're doing wrong. Because it don't just have no name on it, but this is what he said. If you love me, he said, keep it. But we don't do that. This is what he said. He said, for our transgressions are with us. He said, with you every day. And as for our iniquity, we know them. Ain't nobody here don't know when the preach word come what you need to get rid of. So when you don't get rid of it, it tell you one thing. You don't believe. Y'all try to go to sleep if you want to. Let me, have, let me help you when you go to sleep. Can everybody look up here for a minute? Because I think this is a very important scripture to allow y'all to hear about your sin of unbelief. But I want you to hear what I got to say. But if you will not do so, behold, you have sinned against the Lord. And be sure your sin will find you out. Now, see, I ain't want to call the scripture because y'all to get the quoting it. So I want y'all to hear it. And more call, most of y'all don't know it when you, don't, when, you, when you hear it. But if I call the, the, the verse out in your mindset, that's the only thing you remember. Number 32 and 23. He said, but be sure. Well, y'all know that's something. God trying to tell us. He said, look at him. He said, he said, but by manifestation of the truth, commanding ourselves to every man conscious in the sight of God. But then he get down to the second Corinthians 4 and 3. He said, but if our gospel be hid, if our gospel be hid, now let me it bring that down to him. It might be here from somewhere else, but it ain't here to him. You choose to go against what you don't heard. You choose to still do what you want to do and then want to go to heaven. I ain't gonna say, I don't, I ain't gonna say you don't want to deal with hell at all, but you're doing stuff to go to hell. Don't nobody here want to go to hell, but they want to live like they're going to heaven. You ain't got to say nothing. But be sure your sin will find you out. And you know what I'm finding out about people? Everybody talk a good uh, rap session about how they love God and how they serving God and how they getting their life right. But when you look through the scripture, I'm going to start calling a lot of them joker because they just talking. But listen to what James, uh, Jeremiah 7 and 28 said. It said, but thou shalt say unto them, this is a nation that obey not the voice of the Lord, thou God, nor receive correction. Truth is perished and is cut off from their mouth by unbelief. Because you want to put God's word to the side and establish your own. It's a sin of unbelief. Because you know why? You like what you're doing. And that's the problem. But he said, if our gospel be hid, 
It is here to them that are law. So when your unbelief is like that, you sit up in the church law. Even though you hear God's word, you want to be law. So it's the sin of unbelief. And as I look at y'all, there's a lot of y'all in here got a lot of unbelief. Even though you're hearing truth. Even though you, you, you damn because you can't even believe in your leadership. And what have we have not showed you that you can't believe in it? This is what he said. He want us to understand that unbelief is a lack of religion belief absent from faith. And he said it's impossible to please him without faith. This is what he said. He said, but if our gospel be hid, I want y'all to get to the spirit. It is hid to them that are lost. Even though you sin here and you ain't doing what the word said, God consider you to still be lost. That bad. And so why should he come after you when he already had drawn you to the truth? That's what he said. Y'all can go to sleep if you want to. He said, in whom the God of this world has blinded your mind. That's who's telling you to go to sleep. He don't want you to hear information. Information is power. And every time he can get you to dole, every time he can get you to not pay attention, every time he can get you to ignore the leadership, he said, I got him. He said, they sent up in there dying. They, they sent up here. Ignore me. They send up here and they got all kind of ways to ignore me. But when I judge them, they're going to be able to hear every word that was preached to them. But they still going to burn. I want y'all to hear my voice. I want y'all to know. I want y'all to holler out for me. Holler out for me. He said, but if our gospel be hid, I want to get that in your spirit. It is hid to them that are lost. So now if you ain't doing it and you still got a lot of unbelief, how can you sit here all these years and realize you lost. Now I'm going to break down loss to you. Because there's another loss. That's better than this law. Can I give it to him Jeff? Y'all are straight out rebellious. Because it's one thing to be lost. And not understand. Or understand and know how to fully clear enough. But it's bad when you understand. And you choose to be rebellious. Because a lot of y'all is rebellious. It ain't that you don't know what's right to do. You rebellious and you choose not to do it. And you don't care who say it. And you don't care nothing about God. Just like I told you, your mind is so made up that even if God told you, you he can't change it. He can't, he can't change your mind because your mind made up. But listen to what he said. He said, but if our God would be here, then it's here to them that are law. In whom the God of this world has blinded the mind of them which believe not. So the devil got to be your daddy. The devil got to be your daddy. And you sit right up in God's house or Satan worship. That's what he said. He want, he, want, he want to prepare us for the world to come. This is what he said. And he tell us in, 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 in Hebrews 3 and 12, he said, take heed, brother, lest there be any, any of you an evil heart of unbelief. He said, in the part of from the living God. He said, but that be in it. You know he was talking to the church. Listen how I read. Listen how I read. You know it's a sin of unbelief. He said in Hebrews 3 and 12, he said, take heed, brother. That's what we be telling y'all when we be preaching y'all. We be trying to tell y'all, take heed. I stopped telling y'all like, take heed. I be saying, take heed, fool. It's a transfer truck finna hit you. Because y'all ain't hearing me telling y'all, take heed, brother. So when I hurry up and say, take heed, a transfer truck, get out the road. Y'all say, I got an anger problem. And I'm trying to get you out the road where you're going to die at. He said, take heed, brother. Let's there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departed from the living God. He said, in it, in your heart. And here we sit up in him and hear God's word and think we can go our way and do what we want to do. Thank you, God.
for providing such a way to get to you. Thank you. I just want to thank you. Because a lot of us sung that song gave us power to lie. Because you ain't want to go nowhere with God. And if you want, if you sung it, where did you go today? What did you do for him today? Where was your mind most of the day? What did you read? What did you pray? What did you ask God for? Who did you help? Or even better, did you help your own self? This is what he said. He come back in Hebrews 3, 18 and 19. He said, and to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not. But to them that believe not, so we see that they could not enter in because of their unbelief. And so many people saying they're going to heaven, but most of y'all ain't going to heaven. You got too much unbelief. That's what that scripture just said. It's a sin. It's a sin to come into the wisdom and the knowledge of God's word and doubt. Yeah, we're gonna have a good message, great message to me. I know what y'all saying, what you what you talking about. Listen to what he said in Hebrews 11 and 6. He said, But without faith, without faith, y'all hear that? He said, Unbelief, a lack of religious belief, absent from faith. So without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that come to God must believe that he is. So if you got unbelief, you can't have faith. He's, he, he's trying to prepare us for his kingdom. This is what he said in John 3, 18. He said, he that believe on him is not condemned, but he that believe not is condemned already. So all y'all got unbelief, y'all already condemned. Now, God sent this word for you to tell you it's a sin not to believe in God. Especially when you don't heard his word. He said, the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Or the day of provocation, don't rebel. And we sit right here and rebel God's word because in our own mindset, in our own concept of what we want to, we think we all right. And the reason why we think that, the devil tell all of us, you got time. You, you can get right tomorrow. You can do wrong today, get right the next day. He tell you you got time. He fool her with time. Or he fool her, God like me a lot because I'm fine. God like me because I can sing. Well, Wendy Houston and Michael Jackson down there. And I'm quite sure there's some fine women down in hell. And some men, some sick packs. They got sick pack in the ankle. But they burning. They burning. God ain't doing no beauty contest down there. Ain't no beauty pageant down in hell. Ain't no, I ain't no stronger man contest in hell. All y'all living the same thing, and that's fire. It, it, it ain't nothing else y'all living. This is what he said. He that believed not in, is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son. He said, you ain't believe in the name of the only begotten son. He's telling you this. He, because he got us to a point where he's trying to bring us. Then he come back in Hebrews 12 and 1. He said, well for sin, we also are compressed about with so great a cloud of witness. We got so many, Paul, Peter, John, all of them. We got so many. He said, lay, let us lay aside every weight, that thing that's keeping you from serving God the whole heart. That thing what's in you, the people, whoever it is, your mama, your daddy, your sister, brother, co-worker, your own self, your sex desires and all that. Whatever it is, he said, you got to loose it. He said, you got to loose it. He said, and the sin was do easy beset us. He said, let us run the race with patience. Huh? He said, the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author. He done wrote the book. And now we don't want to believe. We don't want to believe. He said, the author and the finisher of our faith. 
He got the clothes on. He said, who for the joy that was set before him and do it the cross. He told his daddy, I'll go. If you want somebody. Everybody else don't fail you. But now we got a great crowd of witnesses up there cheering for us, and we all don't win another way. We cheering people to go against God. We teaching people to go against God. Here, here, here God saved you for your family. And here, here, here your family can make the decision, or you can make the decision not to tell your family what they need to know. You choose to downsize God for your family or who you love and all this. And you know, I'm, I'm getting so tired of these parents, how they doing the children, want to compare their life with God's life. I think that's bad right there. I think any parent would allow they, any spouse or the, in their life to take their children and make an ultimatum for their children to be with them or to be with God and the children with you and you let them go with them, I think that'd be bad. I think somebody need to get cut off there because that means they putting your children to the same place they are when they try to be they God. So in other words, that person saying, I'm your God. Yeah. Well, yeah, my mom would have tried that on me. Oh, they going to hang with me and uh, they ain't going to church. Well, you better go on and get you a lawyer. Second Thessalonians 2 and 12, he said, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth. Now he come back in another way and tell you that you're going to be damned. He said, he said that they all might be damned who believe not the truth. And then they want to act like I'm preaching something in the book. Go look at the book. Go look at the Bible and look at the scripture that I'm calling. He said they all might be damned who believe not what the truth says. So no matter what people think about the church, you can't make the church a, a candy store for everybody. Everywhere I go now, every time I hear people preaching, every quote they got on their, 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 their Facebook and all that, how the church is being to everybody. You know, the church is different from any place it is. It shouldn't be compared to down low places. And I understand the church already got a bad name from y'all already. Well, we need, to, we need to lighten up on people when they come to church. They ain't lighting up on crack. They ain't lighting up on Genesis and Henderson. They ain't lighting up on uh, 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 unlawful set. They ain't lighting up on adultery. And now y'all got a worse thing going because y'all don't know what to do. That COVID coming back, whatever it is. Y'all call it what y'all want to call it. I call it just, just, just the devil getting ready to do something. This is what he said. He's talking to us. This is what he said. He said, in 2 Corinthians 13, he said, examine yourself. Yeah. What he's saying, examine your unbelief. Yeah. Examine your faith. He said, he said, examine yourself whether you be in the faith. He said, well, well, I got to examine myself. I've been in church. I ain't just get him. Why God telling y'all to examine y'all self? Huh? Y'all send to him, and if we got you by yourself, most of y'all, we can't even tell you a believer. Because what y'all to do is play the dumb role. Like, I don't, I'm, what you saying? What you asking me? I ask you as you say. Well, what you mean? What you mean don't say? How long you been in church? This your first day? But y'all know what that is? That's that crafting that you had when you came in the church. You use that same way you are. You use that to make people think you don't know nothing. That's crafting it. When you know, you know. It's what he said. He said, examine yourself whether you be in the faith. Anybody inspect it? In other words, he said, examine yourself, do you believe? Examine yourself. Because, you know, that believe some of the Bible ain't no good. Right? Believing he died for you, well, he died for you to stop sinning. That's what, that what the dad is sinning for. 
This is what it said. He said, examine yourself whether you be in the faith. Prove your own self. He said, don't do it for me. Prove your own self. Look at, look at person he got. He said, prove your own self whether you be in the faith. Now y'all prove to yourself. Is you really believing or did you got some unbelief? Prove yourself. Prove yourself. How do you keep doing the thing you're doing and know it's wrong? Prove it. Let me show you something else. How do you, how, how do you try to prove yourself that you got faith by repenting? When we know repentance means to get it right and put our back to it. So if you got that much sin, every message that y'all come up here for, y'all know the stuff y'all doing is wrong. But when you go back to your seat, unbelief step back in your hole. This is what he said. He said, examine yourself whether you be in the faith. Examine yourself whether you believe. Prove your own self do, that you believe. Know ye not your own self how that Jesus Christ is in you itself. Uh-oh. So now it makes you think unbelief taps you into being reprobated. I usually didn't think y'all were reprobated. The steps of apostle. Every step. Did y'all ever look at that scripture? It said the steps of a good man. The step. Step. So that means every step I take every day ought to be all about God. How many of y'all do that every day? That you plan your life that you're going to be a, a law-abiding Christian every day? That you're going to display God every day? You ain't going to be frowned up on your job when somebody says something to you and then you didn't want to tell them that you saved, but then you just was frowned up on the job. You just got nasty because they asked you to do something, something extra. And all of a sudden, you feel like you don't did too much. But when Christ was stepping for you, all his step were order, and he didn't say a mumbling word and I have no guile in his mouth. So what he said, he's talking to him, he said, examine. He said in John 6 and 40, he said, and this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone would see the Son and believe on him may have everlasting life, and I will rise him up at the last day. He's telling him, I, I, I got you. If you just believe, he come back in John 14 and 12. He said, very, very, I say unto you, he that believe on me, the work that I do, the work, the work, the work that I do, shall he do also. So if I believe, I can do the work God do. But when I got unbelief, that's why I can't lay hands on the sick and they recover. That's why I can't ask God to move for me when I'm in bad situation and I things ain't working out. And I pray, God can't answer because. This is what he said. He, he, God is, oh my God, you so. This is what he said. He come back and tell us this. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believe on me, the work that I do, shall he do also. And greater work than this shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Y'all hear that? Do y'all hear that? This is what John 7 and 38 and 37 said. He said, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believe on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. What's coming up at you? What's coming up at you? Too much unbelief, too much doubt, too much damn, too much think you can go against what God has said. And you ain't no preacher. You don't know God's word like that. Half of y'all can't even study. But what we give you and half of the stuff you know is what we don't give you. You ain't found no revelation on your own. Testify against me if I don't tell the truth. 
And now y'all want to sit around and have unbelief because you want to fill up your own desire. That's what he said. He's talking to us. He's telling, he come back in John 11 and 25 and 26. He said, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. And he that believe in me, though he was dead, yet he lived. He said, that's the power of believing in me. Your belief give you resurrection power. He said, they believe. He said, and, and whosoever live and believe in me shall never die. Believe it out this. I'm going to live forever. You us too with your unbelief. You just going to be in a bad predicament. It's the sin of unbelief. And you know all y'all sitting here looking studio, but this ain't getting in you. Because it was in you, you'll be changing already. You wouldn't be waiting till I get through. You'll be hearing what God's saying right now. And you know that you got a lot of doubt in y'all. And I keep telling y'all, coming up here and doing them little Mickey Mouse repenting, Y'all playing with yourself because it's not in your heart. Because it was in your heart, some of y'all be left some tears up here. And you'll do like prophet told y'all a long time ago. Leave all them wastes up here. Leave all them sins up here. And y'all still taking the two pound and one pound because it ain't that heavy. One sin will separate you from him. This is what he said. He's talking to us because. And this is what he said right here. I love this right here. He said in Romans 1, 16 and 17, he said, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. A lot of y'all have said that in him. But when you get in Walmart and you get to your job and you get to your cookout and your family, family smoking, you won't say nothing about it. That's just what, that's what they want to do. But you're supposed to be a witness for the Lord. You just sung a song, if you want somebody, here am I, send me, I'll go. I may be fatherless, but I'll go. I may be motherless, but I'll go. If the Lord if he wants somebody, here am I, send me, I'll go. I told him that the first day, and it's still the same. Lord, if you need somebody, send me. Listen to what he said. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. So that means the person that just go into church and take the right hand of fellowship don't mean they got salvation if they don't believe. You can't believe for one day and, and then switch back tomorrow. How many of y'all came into church and some of the stuff that y'all came to church to, as long as you've been here, you're still doing some of it? Plunder that in your heart a little bit. Being nasty. And, and for no reason, when God don't want you to be nasty, you're killing somebody. And, and you know what? You know who you really, you know you really killing yourself. That person might not even know you got a problem with them. That person might not even know you didn't like them, because you you still hug them, you still greet them. But in your heart, he said. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. To the Jews first, also to the Greek. And that's what I'm talking about. Again, them black Israelites and Hebrew Israelites. How y'all gonna say, he said, for the Jew first and to the Greek, he talk about Gentile, and y'all take that same Bible, huh? Like Gina James said, he, like, he loved the black man, the white man, the peanut butter man, the yellow man, the gray man, the this man. Anybody that feel God, that's who my brother. So if y'all think the white man is bad, I think y'all bad for not believing. Y'all talk to me. We sit up here and have all this unbelief in our heart when God created us from the dirt. 
And it's all colors, dirt. It's all colors, sand and dirt. So if he made one, he couldn't, he had to make the rest of them. Gina James said something too. The world was created by Noah three son. So that means that mean Noah three son had to make some white people. <laughs> this is what he said. <laughs> he said, for therein is the righteousness of uh, 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 the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just sh should live by belief. You, you know, you know one thing I can see in all our spirit. I'm glad God had me to put these glasses back on, cause a lot of y'all want the message to be over. A lot of y'all ready to go, cause, cause you know, y'all know y'all, y'all relationship with God is not great, and, and that God don't toll on you. You, you, you mad with God? You ain't gonna let me know you're mad with God, but it is. But let me tell you what God just told me to, to go to and tell y'all. He told me to go to John 12. Y'all go to John 12 with me. I want y'all to read this with me. Y'all know where it's at? John, John 12 and 46. And this is how the Savior taught. He said, I, I come... I am come a light into the world that whosoever believe on me should not abide in darkness. This is what he said. And if any man feel my, hear my word and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. So he sent the word to save you, but your unbelief. This is what he said. He said, he that rejected me and received not my word where the apostle have preached has one that judges him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge you in the last day. So that means every word that I have spoken to you, I don't have to judge you, it judges you. So that means every word that been preached to him, every member in him been judged by it. It don't matter. It don't matter if you look down in your Bible. It don't matter if you play with your children. It don't matter if you sit there looking dull like you ain't paying no attention to me. I got your earlobe, and your earlobe take it to your mind. So I know you hear me. He said, every word that I have spoken to you will judge you. And I'm telling you today, it's the sin of unbelief that's why y'all ain't where y'all need to be with God. That's what's wrong with y'all church. This is what he said. This is what he said. He said, he that rejected me and received not my words has one that judges him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken of myself. Pastor Selma, I ain't spoken of myself. But the Father would sent me. He gave me a commandment to preach hell or to scare hell about you. It's a sin of unbelief. He said, what I should say and what I should speak. I know that his commandment of life everlasting, whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. I speak to you today. It's the sin of unbelief that got this church where it shouldn't be. Because everything that you don't heard, that you know you should be doing and you choose not to do, it's a sin of your unbelief. Even getting it right, it's a sin of unbelief. That's what God telling us today. He come back in John 3 and 36. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life, and he that believeth not on the Son shall not see life. Help me. With my unbelief. That was, the, that was the soldier said. He said, Lord, I believe. Because I got power over soldiers. And I tell them to go and come. They do what I say. And I don't need you to go to my house. I need you to just speak the word. How many times I don't spoke the word to y'all life? 
and y'all choose to unbelieve or disregard what God has told me to say. But them same words, I'm going to judge you. He's telling us a lot in this passage. Then he come back, he said, but the wrath of God abide on him. Your unbelief. Let me read that again, because I don't think y'all, y'all look like y'all just don't left him. But I'm going to bring y'all back with this, with this scripture right here. John 3 and 36. He that believe on the Son has everlasting life. He that believe not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abide on him. So that means how many people got the wrath of God abide in him, try to discredit the son? That's why I said people ought to really study the Bible before they start getting in all these religions. They already, and letting stuff come out of their mouth, you know, about the J and all that. They already really study the Bible because God got it all in there. Everything that the world is doing and people doing, he got it right in here. Let me read that scripture again. He that believe on the Son has everlasting life. He that believe in not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abide on him. And you tell me, what white man going to put that in the Bible? That's for all men. The peanut butter color, all of them. The jelly color. This is what it said. He come back in John 6 and 47. He said, very, very, I say unto you, he that believe on me has everlasting life. He come back in 1 John 5 and 10. He said, he that believe on the Son of God has the witness in himself. He that believe in not God has made him a liar because he believed not the re recording that God gave of his son. He said, he don't have it. He don't have it. He come back in Matthew 15 and 14. He said, let them alone. They be blind leading of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into a ditch. You keep following them joker that blind. That ain't got no sight of God. That's why he told me to put my glass on. Son, you need to see. There's some Holy Ghost in these glasses. And he said, now he, he ain't no Holy Ghost in the glass. Well, I see better. When I was in my flesh, I didn't walk, I wouldn't walk right until I got the Holy Ghost. So if the glass would make me see better, then that means I ain't got to hold up and just focus on, trying to focus on reading. I can just go down there and read. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. This is what he said. He said, let them know. I like that. This is what he said in Matthew 15, 7. He said, he, he, hypocrites, ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy to you saying, this people draw nigh unto me with their mouth, and honor me with their lip, but their heart is far from me. But in vain, they do worship me. He said, in vain, y'all coming here talking about, if the Lord wants somebody, here am I, send me, I'll go. And most of y'all ain't went nowhere. Then that one has a beautiful song. Who gonna do it? <laughs> but he hands ain't move. He hands ain't he hands ain't, he hands ain't move that much. <laughs> Boy, God, you awesome. He's talking to us. Oh, God, you awesome. I love him though. He got a way of showing you stuff that don't nobody else see. And I, I, I love him because, like I told you, truth, receive and follow or reject and be a fan. Everybody's now talking about uh, what the uh, Lakers going to do with Westbrook. They must see something in them. They got him. Sin wouldn't be so attractive if the wager was paid immediately. Y'all unbelief wouldn't be so attractive if God paid you immediately. God, you're so awesome. 
But if you will not do so, behold, your, you have sinned against God, the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. God, I thank you for this word tonight. Sin of unbelief. For all the transgression are multiplied before thee. Our sin testify against us. For our transgression are with us. And as for our iniquity, we know them. So God is saying there's no way you can get away with the sin of unbelief. Who will rise up for me against the evildoer? Who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Who will go against the world for me? Who will go against their family for me? Who will go against their wife for me? Who will go against their husband for me? Who will tell the evildoer you're wrong? There is no peace, said the Lord, unto the wicked. Pure evil, morally wrong. He that doubt is damned. He's telling us this because he say, if he be lifted up from the earth, will he draw all men unto me? Unbelief, a lack of religious belief, and absent from faith. It's the sin of unbelief. God, you are so good to be so concerned about this ministry. And as I close, I can close with a better scripture. The title is, it's the sin of unbelief. But Mark 9, 23 and 24, Jesus said unto him, if thou can, can believe, all things are possible to him that believe. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, I do. God, I swear I do. But help my unbelief. Help God, help me with them things that I don't believe. God is trying to tell us something. So examine yourself, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own self. Know ye not your own self, how Jesus Christ is in you, itself ye be reprobated. God, I thank you for showing me how to lead the people at this ministry, to guide them in the way of truth, in spite of where they want to follow. But if you give me what to give them, and I obey you, and I'm in a good standing with you. They don't love God because they don't love, they don't know God. A lot of people in him don't want to believe God because a lot of them don't know God. Faith, complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Strong belief in God or uh, in the doctrine of religion based on spiritual apprehension rather than proof, trust, belief of confidence. I don't even have to believe, I don't even have to see God, but I can trust him. Regarding, but it's a bad thing to have the sin of unbelief and hear God's word and walk out to his door and doubt God's word. It's bad. It, it, it's a bad thing. Y'all just remember Romans 14 and 23. And he that doubted is damned if he eat. But he that eateth not of faith, for 
whatsoever is not of faith is sin. That's what I was telling y'all about eating God's word unworthy. Coming in here and hearing God telling you to change. And in your mind, you don't have no mind to change.